This is a soft plastic lure eye injection mold. We're gonna do a chartreuse eye with black pupil. Look at what we have. Those are our pupils. Every eye is gonna be the same size, matching eyes and bloodlines. Okay, there it is. All right, and here is the final step. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So, today we're talking about eyeballs, specifically soft plastic eyeballs. So, in the past, we have all kind of relied on Lure Works for our soft plastic eyeball needs. And let's get a close up here. This is kind of how they're sold on these uh, sort of aluminum foil sheets. And they come in regular bait bags. They're probably not flavored with scent because, hey, they're eyeballs. <laughs> um, but needless to say, very great packaging. And the eyes are uh, surprisingly consistent for being dripped out of soft plastic, as I'm assuming the process. Um, but don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. That's just kind of how I've always assumed that they were done. And, you know, uh, Lure Works, um, you know, they do a really great job with them. They have, you know, a pretty good color selection. You know, despite this sort of being more of a niche product, it's not as widely used um, on a variety of lures, uh, at least not that I see in my experience, as, say, a 3D eye, which we all use in, uh, for example, our hand pours, things like that. You know, companies like Jetson and Dead Meat, and um, <clears throat> other places as well. I like to use soft plastic lure eyes sort of in conjunction with the Angling AI Bloodline swim bait mold as everybody on, who watches this channel knows. You know, that is like a complete injection system swim bait mold which allows the use of a soft plastic eye to be placed into the mold and then when injected, it bonds and fuses this plastisol eye to the plastisol bait. But we've always kind of been limited to what we can get from LureWorks. Sometimes eyes are out of stock and you're only limited to a handful of colors despite them being actually really good colors. So, what if we were able to do it ourselves? Look at this. That's right. This is a soft plastic lure eye injection mold. All right, everybody, so as you just saw for the first time, this is it, this is the new injection eyeball mold. And if you kind of look at it, you're like, what the heck is this? What are these tabs hanging out the side? Why, is, why are the eye cavities facing up? Why is there an injection port on the bottom? Well, uh, <laughs> all I can say is the concept that Josh was able to come up with is absolutely nothing short of amazing. Like. We both thought about this for months and months, you know, him more than me, obviously, um, but we were just breaking our brains. How do, you how do you make a mold where you can inject plastic that's gonna get to a cavity, fill an eyeball cavity, and also get a centered pupil that's going to work? Like, how does this, it just broke our brains. He's a genius and Let's check out how this works. All right, we're gonna do a quick little run through of the mold and then it's time to make some eyes and demonstrate this thing. So this is how it's going to come, essentially. You're actually gonna see the eyeball cavities facing up, which is gonna confuse you because how, how is that supposed to work, right? How, how am I supposed to get plastic in it when it's like that? Well, not to worry. This is actually the side that you use first. You can see that this says quarter inch uh, eye, which it also kind of works as a six millimeter. And just sort of a little warning up here, overpressure will result in blowback. So basically, don't inject hard. Don't force a bunch of plastic out of there because it can boil back out due to overpressurizing the mold. So far I have found I just inject it regularly and all these little tiny cavities fill. So you might think you really have to force it to get it to fill, you actually don't. So here's how this thing works. This is how you inject the pupils. So your pupil color goes on this bottom side first, okay? And here's just how neat this thing is. Like, I, I don't know how he figured this out or even came up with the idea, but <clears throat> here's what you get. 
The pupils, actually, the plastic comes in from that side and it fills these lines right here, okay? Which then shoot up right through these little holes, creating sort of a circular tab, right? A circular stem. Once you have that done, you remove the top plate, which leaves just these little stems sticking up from all these holes in whatever color your pupil is. You then take the top plate, flip it over. Ah, now we have the pupil stems centered, sticking up centered in the eyeball, uh, in the iris part of the mold. Now, whenever we inject from this side, we're filling in the eyeball around that pupil tab. Absolutely genius uh, idea, and I have to say it works extremely well. So, that's enough jibber jabber. It's time to actually watch this work in action. Okay, let's do our pupils. So, the most common color for a pupil is undoubtedly just straight black. So that's what we're gonna start with. We're gonna do a chartreuse eye with black pupil. And you only need just a little bit of plastic, obviously. So here we go. All right, that's pretty much it. Okay, all the pupils are now done. Mm. That is dead on plastics uh, worm blend right there. I think the softer blend you use, the better the eye will actually wind up bonding to the bait when you actually go to use it. So black pupils are done, and now let's mix up our chartreuse. Okay, everybody, we mixed up some chartreuse here. That is dead on plastics worm blend, of course, and uh, a ton of chartreuse. You really want your colors highly saturated because it's such a small, thin cavity that if you don't really have your colors mixed thick, you're just not gonna get a whole lot of contrast. Um, the eyes are just gonna kinda look see-through and that's just because it's such a small item, so to speak. So here's how this thing works. We already did our black pupils from the underside. So now we wanna take this side off. This has to be facing up so that the pupils will hit this flat undersurface. You can actually kinda see the little dots, right? Okay. Now, we're going to take just this top tab off. That's why these tabs have these little leaves on the edges. Okay, now, look at what we have. Isn't that something? Those are our pupils, okay? So now, we put this top plate on, and you can see that's gonna line up, and we're basically injecting into this cavity around this, this pupil stem. It's actually quite crazy, okay? So, we're gonna go ahead and close this up. You can see I have the bloodline insert mold over here because what half of what inspired the, the um, production and development of this mold was the thought of being able to match bloodlines with the eyes. So, let's do it, here we go. Some chartreuse, all right. Just like that, the eyes are done. It just takes two little hits with the injector. All right, and here are some matching bloodlines. I actually don't even know if I had enough plastic for that, surprisingly, but we'll find out. All right, and just like that, you've made a whole round of eyes and matching bloodlines, which as you know, can result in many, many swim baits. Okay, first ever um, run with the eyeball mold on camera. You know we guys gotta do a drum roll, so join me in a drum roll, please. Time for the grand reveal. So you can see a nice bright chartreuse on our uh, bloodline inserts right there. Now let's see how our matching eyes did, okay? So basically, we're just gonna kinda yank that part out. And let's see what happened. Again, kind of want to keep that plate down and just sort of remove, actually, sorry. I don't know what I'm doing, folks. Yeah, so that's what it looks like from the bottom. That's the path that the pupil um, plastic took, okay? Now we can just sort of peel this off, just like any normal mold. 
Okay. And look at that. Look at that. You have all of these eyes. And what's great about doing it this way is the consistency. Every eye is going to be the same size. It's going to be completely filled in. Every pupil is going to be perfectly centered and perfectly even, the exact same size, okay? So, you sort of have this plate full of eyes. Now, we need to get the backs of these off, okay? And essentially, just take a razor blade and slice down. This is just kind of the way that I've just figured out to do it, okay? I'm just gonna slice down there and on this side as well. Alrighty, we're almost there. Had a few few pieces here, not want to cut clean. It's okay, maybe we can get them back that direction. Yeah, there we go. So I just kind of want to clean that off as, as best we can. So now we can actually remove the eyes, okay? And so you can see we have this nice string of eyes. Oh, missing one there, there it is, okay? And so you still have sort of this tiny little stem on the back, okay? You can then slice that off individually if you want. However, it really doesn't matter that you have that stem if you're gonna use it in say the bloodline mold or the angling AI DR mold or any other mold that has an inverted eye socket that you want to place an eyeball in. And I'll show you why that's really a non-issue once we get to that part, we're actually going to make a few bloodline swim baits with our matching components. Okay, so off camera, I went ahead and I got out my five inch bloodline molds, and here's what we have. We have, for the first time ever, 100% matching eyes, soft plastic eyes, with our bloodlines. And you can see that tab still sticks up, right? But because you actually face the eyeball in upside down so that it's right side out whenever you uh, remove the final bait from the mold, it really doesn't matter. And in fact, that little tab, we, uh, we pretty much, uh, both of us agree, kind of promotes bonding. It's extra mass for the plastic to actually bond to that eye instead of just a straight, flat, black back. So um, what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of keep it simple here for this first little run. Let me... Uh, raise the camera up son we're basically just going to um, inject just kind of a straight white pearl over this um, just a solid color just to kind of keep it simple again today's video is about this eyeball mold and kind of showing what it can do not necessarily about trying to create the coolest most crazy color um, so we're basically just featuring the mold so we're gonna do that real fast and uh, we'll meet you right back all right let's take a look at some bloodlines here this is just so cool. Like the, the Bloodline swim bait injection system is like the ultimate injection mold swim bait system. And now it's 100% complete. That's just so cool. So, so, so cool. Let's see what we got. Yeah, look at that. So cool. For the first time ever, we have 100% matching eyes and bloodlines. So, Let's get out this bottom bait. Loner down here at the bottom. Put him up here with his friends. Golly. Check it out. Such a cool color too. And I like sort of the way that I would make a color like this and the way I did it here is really high saturated eyes and bloodlines. But that white pearl is not as saturated so you kind of get two different color textures there and uh man i think it's absolutely awesome so we're gonna go ahead and take these out again don't want to spend too much time looking at baits because today's about the eyeball mold oh just dropped a uh hook slot but that's okay but we definitely need to take a closer look because you know this mold in particular is is a lot of the reason why this eyeball mold is here. So really cool. Okay, and there it is, just like that. Look at the pop on those eyes and, and those bloodlines. You know, before, yeah, sure, you could have made a bloodline like that, but you never would have gotten an eyeball to pop as much as that without being able to mix your own coloring. So 
that's, I mean, that pretty much speaks for itself. That is absolutely awesome stuff. Okay, so so far we have demonstrated the mold and kind of demonstrated its ultimate use in the Bloodline swim bait mold. Now, there are going to be other sizes of this eyeball mold. This is just the quarter inch, which fits the four inch DR swim bait, uh, the five inch, as well as the four and five inch Bloodline swim baits. Now, for those of you at home that may have the six inch Bloodline swim bait, um, there will be an eyeball mold size to fit that as well. And you know, what's great about being able to do this is I think you can match any color now, essentially, you know. Uh, I mean, obviously 3D epoxy eyes, I mean, some of the highest quality eyes, like, like what you see from Jetson, Dead Meat, Fish Skull, you know, that sort of effect obviously cannot be duplicated in soft plastic. But look at how many other lures, you know, eyeballs work with. Soft plastic frogs, soft plastic jerk baits. People were putting eyes on tubes, of course. Now you can basically match your bait with a soft plastic eye, which I think will actually maybe work a little bit better with a soft plastic bait instead of slapping a hard eye on a tube. Uh, some of you that maybe have more experience with that than me can kind of comment on that perspective. Um, but needless to say, that was just sort of a solid color, just chartreuse. Now let's look at some glitter eyes. And what I mean by that is instead of putting color, we're just gonna mix up a ton of flake and then inject that around another black pupil. And then from there, we're actually gonna show you what just a solid color looks like. All right, next round of black pupils, here we go. Just gonna hold a little bit of pressure. Again, you don't really need to just force the issue. And, uh, and it's actually recommended that you not just try to just blow plastic in there as hard as you can. All right, so uh, warning, dead on plastic may look like water. Stuff is pretty darn clear, but do not drink. So with that out of the way, this is my attempt at humor. With that out of the way, it's now time to open the mold again. All right. So we just did the black uh, pupils, okay. All right. And again, we just want to remove just this top sheet. And there are the black pupils. If you were to accidentally kind of pop this up, it may be difficult to get everything back in place. So you definitely kind of want to pay attention there. All right, and now we will close the mold right side up as it, as it were. Okay, and then now we are ready <clears throat> for the second color which we are gonna mix up right now. So again, we have our DOP chilling right here. All right, and we're just gonna do a flake color. But we're gonna do some really cool laser glitter, okay? So again, you gotta think more is more on this. Sort of the opposite from hand pouring where usually less is more and you want less saturation. Now we want a lot. And to get that, we need to add a lot of flake. And I mean a lot of flake. And this is a tiny amount of plastic. And we're adding all of this flake. That's just to make sure that it really shows up and the eyeball is actually saturated. So, let's kind of see what we've got so far. This laser flake is super cool stuff, by the way. Yeah, check that out. However, I want more. Okay, more, more, more. So you're definitely gonna use a lot of flake on these. However, that's enough plastic for more eyeballs than you wanna make with just one mold. So a lot goes a long way here. Okay, in a last minute adjustment, I actually added a little bit of .008 silver flake to the mix, as you can see there. So hopefully that didn't ruin it, but let's see at least what we got here. Okay, there it is. Look at those. Ha <laughs> ha. Focus for me, baby. Come on. Might be a little too close in. Look at that. So cool. And you can see just the consistency. Every single one of them turned out perfectly. You know, there's no inconsistencies doing it with this method.
So let's just kind of get one of these strips off here, kind of lay it out. Awesome, 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 awesome. So yeah, there's one idea out of thousands. So one of my favorite eyes that I always got from Lureworks was the hologram flake black pupil eye. Well, now I have my own. So we're just gonna run another single color. We have matching uh, hologram eyes and hologram lines, and let's see what we can get. Hey, hey, look at that. Super cool. I just had a little bit of remelt uh, green color shift, and you can see the eyes look absolutely awesome on that nice matching hologram effect i love it let's uh let's get one out and play with it look at that awesome stuff y'all really really cool Sweet, sweet. Okay, now let's try the inverse. Let's do an all flake pupil and then a solid color around it, okay? So we're gonna use the hologram flake, okay? You just saw that in the other effect. So now we're just, again, gonna do the inverse. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Our little hologram pupils sticking up. Kinda neat. Okay, so what we've come up with is all black flake with a little bit of purple flake, okay? So that should have a nice contrast from our hologram pupils. And uh, hopefully this will look good, you know? I mean, these are some of my first ever experiments with this mold that you're seeing today. I only did, I think I only used it twice prior to this video just to kind of get the sequence down you know because it is so different you look at this thing it looks alien you're like what the heck is this so you know i wanted to make sure that i at least knew what i was doing well enough to explain the mold and i and to hopefully showcase it um in a positive way hey i tell you i really like this inversion stuff look at that check that out huh that is so neat. From a distance, it almost looks like a hollow eye, right? But you get up close and you can see all the effects. Now, a hologram is really hard to come across on camera, so uh, this looks a thousand times cooler in person. But yeah, there it is, you know? Just, just trying to show you as many different ideas now that we have this option. Okay, everyone, before we do our last eyeball color, just for this video, tons more to come, uh, let's talk about a little bit of safety when using this mold. Obviously, all safety practices um, pertain, you know, ventilate your area, wear gloves, don't come out here in, you know, open toe shoes, things like that. Uh, wear a respirator if you're uh, unable to ventilate properly. But specific to this mold, because it's so different, right? If we look at this, you're, you're like, what on earth, right? So this mold is designed and meant to be used exactly how we did it today. You have to have this uh, top side part facing up, okay? So it looks like it's backwards, right? The cavities are facing up because what that does is create a block, right? The, the smooth underside of this blocks that uh, pupil color from entering the runners right up here and then spurting plastic out, out the top. So even if you want to do a solid color, you'll need to do both steps just in the same one. So if I was to take this top piece off, okay, and flip it over, thinking that now I only need to just inject it from the top or bottom and I'll get my solid color, well, yeah, you're right. However, you are now letting plastic go through the entire mold system, through all those little teeny tiny holes and everything, and no matter what side you inject from, plastic is going to come out the other side, which, you know, I don't need to tell you, can be potentially dangerous um, if you really force it or if you are too close to the mold or the mold's on the edge of the table, some of that plastic that comes out the bottom side, whichever side you do, 
might spill over the table. So um, you definitely cannot do that. You can only flip this over and put it in, I guess, right side down whenever you already have your pupils um, in the mold. That will block plastic from going back through these holes, back down through this plate, and back out the bottom injection port. So yeah, you know, it definitely requires some attention to what you're doing. You don't just lay it out there and run it. Um, so, you know, that is basically what we wanted to get across is it needs to be done in the right order. It needs to be done exactly like this, right? With this cavity facing up, you then run the pupil cover first, then you can take this off, flip it around, and then fill in the rest of the eyeball. You'll need to do that even with a solid color, like I said, or else you will literally just run plastic in one side and out the other, which there again can be potentially dangerous. You will get a solid eye color, but you don't wanna do that and we don't recommend you do that. Do not do that. And just kinda of one more time for demonstration purposes. Okay, you remove that top plate, you remove just this middle plate, leave the bottom plate, and now we can safely set that plate in um, with the cavities facing inward. All right, and here is the final step. Oop. Done, solid eyes, here we go. Okay, there are the solid eyes sort of a black and green color shift. So here is basically what I'm thinking is thumbnail. And uh, that's super cool. I have never seen a site like that on this table out of all the things I've done. We can do it, we can finally do it y'all. Our own custom soft plastic eyes. And just sort of a little demonstration. Here is that solid eye that we just ran in the angling AI four inch uh, hand pour mold. So it will fit this mold and basically double as a six millimeter eye. And there it is with the uh, hologram ah, flake eye. So, yep, that looks a little bit more like what you would do. And you know, that little tab that's on the back, you just snip it off and, uh, and then you can affix it to a flat surface like the inside of this eye socket or uh, slap it on any mold you want. That's what's so great about this. Well, all right, everybody, there's the spread. I hope you have enjoyed. I hope you've been inspired. This is a very inspiring piece of equipment. I mean, this is the first one ever. This is, I mean, this is the first concept like this um, ever in the hand injection bait world. Okay, everybody, I am back inside where it is much colder. Thank God for air conditioning. And um, yeah, just kind of wanted to do, uh, film just a short little outro here. What a cool thing, what an inspiring tool. You know, it, it kind of feels like when I first got the Bloodline mold, um, golly, it's been forever ago now. And I was just like, wow, just the options that you have. And um, wow, now even more options. So I'm, I'm, what I'm really looking forward to is seeing some of the baits that other people put these eyes on that aren't swim baits. You know, like, like I said, I mean, frogs, jerk baits, tubes, almost anything. Um, so I'm really, really excited to, to see where this goes. Um, what an awesome concept. Hat is off to Angling AI for just putting in the work to try to bring something like this to life. Um, a lot of people have kind of wondered if, if it was possible and uh, we just didn't know if it was, but we got it done or he got it done. I cannot take any credit for that whatsoever. But uh, hey, something that fresh and exciting calls for one of these. Mm -mm. We'll catch you guys next time.